This episode is brought to you by Bottom Slap, which is the pants I'm wearing right now. They are versatile, they are sporty, they fit my lifestyle, and they are awesome. Get yours at 10% discount via the link below. Thanks. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Reaction Series. And today, back to Malaysia, because I think the previous episode was so good, right? So now, coming back, um, we will react to Cheryl's Lee's brand new house, right? So she will be getting her, I think she got her house already and it's a brand new one and she went through this entire ID engagement and things like that. So come back to Malaysia, let's check it out. This house is... Do you want to buy this one together or do you want to buy this one I don't know which card She's a host, used to be with ATV, right? Then I think her voice is so like broadcasting kind of voice. <coughs> I maybe want to sound like broadcasting also. Like, you know what, just watching right now, in before. Anyway. She is also doing a business, she's an author that I have several friends who is her one of her biggest fans that they follow her across Malaysia for her book tour like every single city in Malaysia and he will be sitting right in front taking a picture with her supporting and I think one of her books I think she talks kind of about like 18xx kind of thing then uh, there's a separate segment like the book is open to public only there will be a segment that is sealed. Yeah, so this is the author. And, and you see like the front part, the front portion of the B-rolls, right? Already mentioned a lot of things that are more sensitive, like why is it wrong to say how much a property is, right? And how, why is it so confusing whenever a person goes into a property, especially when a new buyer, right? I don't know where's the road. Baru VP, yeah, those, those VP houses. And I think she is very well known for her transparency and I hope to see more. Like. But the editor is going to take a very tough time because he don't understand anything. That's Bang Sa South. The guard house is Bang Sa South. Okay, let's not point out which project, but there's a lot of projects in Bang Sa South, okay? So. Home to my home. So just on what you went through at the lift lobby, right? Generally, when you go into any other apartment, lift lobbies are bright because it's shared. So it's a common area. So when you see just now in the dark, welcome to my home scene, it's because it's a private lobby. It means the lights in that private lobby is under your responsibility as well. So when it opens up directly, it's your unit. So the leaf lobby is part of the house. That's why it's dark. If I were to install, right, it only makes sense if it's a common area. So this is not a common area. It's part of the property. So it's pretty atas lah. Like that is already pretty atas. And when you go in, you can see that huge open plan. Yeah, like a it's not marble flooring. It's marble look-alike tile. So now, because of digital printings, a lot of ceramic tiles, like homogeneous tiles, now you have printings on the tiles itself. And last time, printings old timers, right? Because of the printer size being the limitation, the duplication of patterns is pretty limited. So now they have this big pattern printed across like maybe 12 tiles. So there's less duplication. If not, we have seen the one, I think, the legacy, or Kampung Baru, right? The, the, you look at the patterns of the tiles, the duplication is like single, singular. That's why the, every tiles looks the same, and that's oh. the worst. Yeah, there's no continuation of the pattern, and that, that's what makes it fake. This is a condo. Why do I live condo? Because I always feel like a condo is more safe. I don't know why. Okay, she mentioned condo comes with the feeling of safety and security. That's why she ultimately said the condo over landed. And it has always been a big debate, lah. like 1 million, right? Would you go for a landed house or would you go for a condo? But ultimately, again, most of us all will pursue that landed living lifestyle. But individual lifestyle, I think part of the videos that we did in the channel, you can really see maintenance people, like grass cutting people right up to your doorstep. People who want to read your meterings, delivery boys, <coughs> they really just park in front of your house and go in. So it's 
too easily approachable, too easily accessible, and that becomes a scary thing. Especially when you three o'clock when you work OT. I don't make your work OT lah. I don't make them work OT. Okay. If you were to work really hard, then you go back home. You don't feel safe, and then there will be always people behind you. But once you go into a compound of a gated and guarded, then that's the feeling that a lot of people like. Lah. Yes, there will still be burglary and crime scenes within the apartment, but it's less. It's more contained. Yeah, there'll be insider jobs, but it's still more contained like, in that sense. Because every, ultimately now CCTV is everywhere. Mm, so that's why a lot of people still choose 1 million for a condo. Landed strata will not eliminate this Um to a certain extent. So it means that every, there's a check-in and check-out. At least you know who is in a compound, how long. And when that particular incident happens, there will always be a record. It's a better measurement compared to an individual title because the roads are public. It means anybody can use. This one roads are private. But the cons is you need to maintain yourself. Yeah. Now we are now coming to this place. Very clearly, it's a big building. And then this is yeah. This is a project that we reviewed before. House is already very good, but there are still some weaknesses. For example, look at my. ID, the stickers are indications of defects. So every time VP, vacant possession, um, when you receive a call from the developer saying that your unit is almost ready, you need to pay the remaining 5%, right? Then you need to pay some deposits for your water, for electricity, and all the utilities. Then only they will put you in an appointment for you to take your keys. And when you get your keys, there will be a handover process if it's higher-end product. I seriously think all products should have a tour and a handover process. Like what you can see around the project, what would be the measurements and actions to be made if there's any defects. All this needs to be explained to the buyer and they will give you a sticker also so for you to indicate. And once you stick a hey, the wall crack, lah, whatever, whatever defects, you can always complain to the customer service. I don't think it's complain just to file in and see what they can do. Lah. So a sticker is an indication and it's normal. Right? It's around 3 to 5% of the area in a house. Ultimately, it takes like gazillion man hours to build up the house that's 46 story, if not mistaken for this one. So with that kind of scale, ultimately it's all man-made. It's not machine built. Therefore, there will always be defects, right? Don't have to be too particular about you this one a lot of defects one. It also depends on the severity of defects, right? Like we can continue like talk too much already. We barely started. Dry kitchen, they left it empty. Then it's again a debate. Some people have preference, they want to do it their own. Some people like the developers to build it for them because it's easier. So I don't want to do all the wet work. So it's, uh, I don't know, like if you were to have a condo, to me, I think it's a price point thing. If it's an affordable one, I would prefer that the developer just do it for me. Then uh, because I can include that lump sum into the loan, I don't have to pay up like another 12, 15,000 for the kitchen cabinets. But for higher end ones, Money is not such a big issue, therefore they would prefer to have their own design, they customize themselves. So developers will just put in the plug point and it's up to the carpenters or the renovators to themselves. Sir. <laughs> 因为我是一个经常做饭的人，所以各位干爹，如果你要赞助我厨房的话，这就是你的。In the Mandarin YouTuber world, I need to explain to the editor. He has no clue why what's happening. <coughs> so they call sponsors. I uh, So dear I uh, I have a new house. And is that the reason why people do houses to call for sponsorship? I think it's very Malaysian things, right? Like hmm, daddy. <laughs> Daddy Manis <laughs> Daddy Gula <laughs> Now we'll go to the house 
我还在三十六，要不要敲掉它，然后做新的 ？What she said just now, she is hesitating whether to tear down everything and rebuild. So again, this is about budget. Budget with preference. If there's a graph, right? I think that if the editor can choose a graph, the higher budget you have, the more preference towards customization you will have. Because like to me, ah yeah, whack again do thirty thousand only, ma. I got three million. Why not, right? So that will always be the case. And I don't know. I think this reaction video has really. Put us from being a very investment mindset to a very own use home homestay mindset, right? Like the kitchen. What's the difference with a wonderful, well built, customized kitchen versus a standard kitchen? Practicality. One thing I think it's about height. Like my mom is shorter, so her preference for the wall height is very different because she cannot fry like that, so she cannot. That's why she she stopped cooking anymore. Then like the preference of the location in terms of feng shui. But I think generally when developers build kitchen. It's already all in accordance to the general stuff, but if you still want, I want black color for the countertop. Too bad lah, right? I want different uh, backsplash. Sorry lah, right? I think there's no right, no wrong. But would you do it? Forty to fifty thousand. If you are already buying a one million condo, so it, it means that money is not really that of a problem, really lah. Yeah, I think we learn a lot just by looking at people's house, right? Because he's coming with the quality. 我觉得不算非常无敌差，可是可以再好一点。我现在这一次是本着我以后不要再搬家的心情做这边家，就是刚才我们。One simple statement, it means that she wants to do the house as if it's going to be her last house. She don't want to move again. That's why her tediousness and seriousness to the house. But isn't that the story you tell yourself every single house you stay? That's what humans do, right? Once I get like a stage, okay, once I'm good enough, I reach abundance again. You know what? Opposite looks better. Let's go. Right, opposite looks. And that's the problem also for home renovation. That's why always best budget. Right, I'm gonna do this once in a lifetime. It's somewhat like marriage. I'm gonna marry this guy only once in a lifetime. But things don't work out always. So you will have I silang or I use up everything for the house renovation. Then I do again. Then I do again. Then I do again. That's why renovation becomes so expensive. And contractors love it. Once in a lifetime, money. Once, money. Do nice, nice. Go for. Yeah, so this was the private leaf foyer. 这样子通，所以如果你在厨房要丢垃圾的话，你就可以这样子走出去。Okay, 然后去到。You see, just now main door got one access from the kitchen. That's one access. I tried understanding before. Part of it is fire requirement. Part of it is because it's not presentable for the house assistant or the maid lah. I guess call it a maid lah, right? The kaka will walk through the guests. So if I have a guest or people around the house, it's not presentable for the maid to take up all the food waste through the living hall and go out lah. So that's a separate access from the kitchen. Yes. Here, look at here. 它后面还有一个小鸭，这个鸭如果你喜欢晒衣的话，这里就是你晒衣的地方。那我是，没有，因为有些人像我妈这样，她会坚持要用阳光来弄干那个衣服，可是我从来就是用烘衣机而已，她就觉得烘衣机会弄坏。Yeah, this is the debate between must your clothes be under sunlight or is it just good enough to be in the dryer? The solution is your previous the UV one. Maybe I should be the distributor for that lah. That's so practical. Ionizer lagi wo. 衣服，所以喜欢晒衣是有根据。所以就是晒衣哦。然后这里还有一间，这里还有一间房。那这一间呢，可以做 storage 或者是做工人房。然后这边就是有一个洗手间。其实我想问，为什么大家对 bathtub 这么有期待哈、啊？ bathtub 等一下带你去看看其他房间先。其实 she was telling the editor what's up with bathtubs. Why are people so obsessed with bathtubs at home? But I think the fact of having bathtubs somewhat resembles luxury, or it's because to accommodate a bathtub, your the scale of your bathroom needs to be of a certain size. Yeah, so your bathroom is like that. Mungkin your Bedroom is the same size, right? Right, so it means also your bedroom will be bigger just to accommodate that, and for you to have the time to soak in that bathtub. So that's the profile of buyer as well. Also, the view to the bathtub. That can I soak in the bathtub? Then look at other condos. Doesn't make sense also, right? So I I do see why lah, and like for 
us who are struggling with space a lot in our daily lives, right? Having a bathtub is... But then for those who own it, they barely use it. Like all of them, they don't like it because the shower area is actually attached as the bathtub. So they shower at the bathtub. So like to wash, the bathtub becomes a hassle. Yeah, so it's like those scenario where when I don't have it, I want it. But after I want it, I don't need it. Oh, this is a human, this is like a human lesson. Whoa. Yeah, so this is the project that we have reviewed before. <coughs> That's a very, very rare landed property right in front in Bangsa South. Right? So here, what I want to say is the proportion of facade it's directly connected to the price range of the property and that's how i measure whether this project is atas or not it's based on the percentage of facade as glazing because aluminium and glazing is a very very big chunk of cost in terms of construction for a particular building so the more building uh, facade area as glazing the more it makes sense. Another point is that you may see that some condos are actually just to this point. It's not directly to the bottom. Actually, this way... And I like that it's built on a curb, meaning it's built elevated somewhat. Yeah, so because this is a better detail compared to directly to the floor. Yeah, so this one is not as easy to have seepage during rain and wind and it's easier to construct, way easier to construct. Also, like certain offices with curtain wall designs, like the whole building is glass. They have a metal strip at the edge of the window because they worry that your chair with wheels will crack the window and then you fall down, right? It's actually bulletproof windows, lah, but yeah, it's not as easy. So those are tempered glass and some they even they sandwich the tempered glass together. It's super solid because it's a facade that withstand wind in level 46 sometimes, right? But yo, you keep banging also if you purposely bang. Lah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yes, I am asking for curtain, but what she was saying like the, the bigger surface area for glazing, the hotter it becomes. Yeah, so that's why the cost of curtains is actually very, very high. But please, if your window is half size, don't do half size curtain, right? It looks very weird, right? I know it's to save money, but it's marginal, right? So don't do. We have seen a few, like I think, bad examples. Maybe editor. Bad examples of short skirt. We call them the short skirt, the mini skirts of curtain. One very blur line. Until today, I still don't get an actual answer for this. Is if I were to tint the window, but it adds a certain darkness to the glazing does it affect then on the profile of the facade like for buildings like now i cannot put in a veranda it's against the strata law you cannot change the facade so i can change the curtain right but what happens if i tint the window so if i yeah so if i tint the window so when you look from outside so some is like matte black then some is you can see through you can really tell man. does that count i asked but i said nobody done it before so i don't it's either they choose to do this or they just like, oh yeah, never mind lah. It's, it's, you want to do whatever you do lah. Because tins are not cheap also. But it greatly uh, reduces the heat. So yeah, it's just like our car windshield kind of tinting. I think it's the same technology. You want light in, but you don't want the heat. Tint then, sometimes it depends on which side is uh, brighter, then you can see which side. So when outside is brighter, you can see outside. But when inside is brighter, everyone can see inside. So you still need a curtain. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to do curtain. But I can already uh, partition the heat away from that window level. Don't need to come into the curtain. So that's what I'm saying. You want to do double? Eh? I can already afford such a high-end property. Man. Action. Not my house also. <laughs> 这个就是一间本来的格局就是一间 Yeah, she's thinking of converting that small bedroom into a wardrobe space, a walk-in wardrobe. And I think that's generally the the teams around small bedrooms. Let's say it's a three bedroom, right? There's one, the third one is always the smallest. And we have seen so many turning into a hobby room, a passion room, or whatever room. For ladies, it's a wardrobe. Wow. 
这间就稍微比较小一点。我的想法是，这间是要给呃男人做他的书房。其实男人是很需要 man cave 的，就是男人的洞穴。I don't know. So what she said, for those who don't understand Mandarin, she is planning to convert that room into a man cave for her partner. Right? I don't know whether it's a boyfriend or a husband yet, but she said it's a need for guys to have their own private space. So it depends on whether you agree or not. To me, my laptop is my space already. Lah. So I have no idea. Right? When the kid comes into the life, what cave? <laughs> right? It's a shared cave. But it's good. Lah. You always think like each person have their own room, especially in the condo itself. I think landed, you still have upstairs, downstairs to partition out the privacy. If it's a one level thing, right, it's tough, man. And you see each other the entire day. From you wake up, you see the person, until you sleep, you still see the person. Eh. Wow. This quackway is a bit kick. When people buy a house, this quackway is a bit kick. How to 其实就会有一点头痛啊！大家有什么建议的话，可以给我。到底要怎么样使用我的空间？这里。So what you mentioned is a very weird corner of the house, and to me, I think standard. House, you can always DIY yourself. Like those 700 square feet to 1,200 square feet. You look into the floor plan. You know where to put things already. So it's whether you want to dress up the walls, you want to do up better lighting, then that will create the difference. So it's still possible to do it yourself DIY. But when the space is too big, like this, I think this is I think 1,008 to 2,000 square feet, or the space is too small when you have 380 square feet only. And you have very weird corners like this storage, but then like how, what's the cabinet strategy? How do you open it? Because every time you, a lot of people don't know this, like at the L angle, right? Always at the L, the, the intersection between both panels, those are wasted because you don't know how to place them. So a strategy that a lot of interior design design is they will pull out the elements. So you have all these mechanisms available but those cost money. So if you want to maximize space, like storage especially, uh, do get ID designers for their advice. And those are their valuable aspects. Not so much about aesthetic, I think that's the bonus, but all the strategies of better storage, I think those is very, very important. But three bedrooms, right? One for sleeping, one for man cave, and another one for wardrobe room. Whoa.啊，这一间就是master 不过我每次泡脚都会有一种挣扎 She's saying that she would hope that there will be sponsorship for jacuzzis But what I really thought through is There will be jacuzzis in the common areas Like the swimming pool, there will be bubbles But it's not yours, so you don't have to share if it's in your own premise But I'm just thinking like why jacuzzis work for hotels instead of being in the home I think it's because of the mind When you are in a holiday, you just release everything You are prepared to do nothing That's why jacuzzi makes sense But if you are on your daily hustle, you go every morning and you soak yourself there Phone calls, emails, ding dong Hey your, your there's a package for you it's just very frustrating. And then does it make sense to have a jacuzzi at home? Again, if it's a budget thing, then I can have it but not use it. But I'm just talking about the practicality of it. Because if it's not a bathtub, then it's a very nice shower area where you can also have sitting areas around your shower. So we have seen that like toilets with sitting areas where people can just chill under the shower. Since toilets are provided by developers in the homes, are owners allowed to change that? Yes. Yes, you can change the toilet almost immediately after you take, but that will void all defects. In the toilet? Yes, in the toilet. So it means that I want to complete the wall tiles is being uh, empty or hollow, but then I hack everything. So I think very good point. So it ties back to your strategy. Like 
if you're going to maintain all elements of the house after VP, then doing the going through the defect process makes sense. If that's not your intent, I want to change everything. Some people even hack off the entire floor, right, to change all into timber or to all into their favorite stone or whatsoever. Then you why go through all the defects? And that becomes a very, very blur line between like sometimes I hack the bathroom, but there are defects in the kitchen. Then the contractors, of course, they are salary earners, my wage earners. So, hey, you do renovation already, it doesn't make sense for because it voids. So it's also very area specific when you do the renovation as well. That's why they need to go through permit. And it's not that complicated for condos because it's like it's only 2,000 square feet. But if you think about landed homes, the pipings are inter levels. Yeah, so sometimes they want to change toilet elements, you need more pipings, you need more cablings, you need everything, right? So those are the elements when you do renovation, a very important thing, very good. You didn't waste your time here <laughs> for working in a channel, right? So I think only an experienced homeowner, you went through the process then you know. Lah. Like if I were to just hack a wall and I realize the tiles is hollow, then whose fault is it? Then some may argue that, hey, because you hack the wall, that's why it's hollow. Bullshit, right? But if I were to, so that is a, I think it's more of a communication skill rather than you can die, die, I slam table, I want to complain and complain and complain. Then every time the contractor come and do, I do one piece, make your life miserable. Ultimately, it's only 24 months. Yeah, or you just want to just, okay lah, just, close one eye and just finish the work. It's not going to affect my life, then just move on with it. Lah. That's why, is there a right way to do defect checks? I think that's important things. Number one is to check for moisture, which a lot of people don't check. Unfortunately for condos or houses, right? We can only check during rainy days. When there's a rainy days, go to your new unit, check for all the windows. So those are the seepage that happens, but new houses rarely it happens. I think for with the current uh, construction quality, none of them is common anymore. Then the next one would be people don't test the ponding for your shower area, right? Wet areas by right, I would pour a pail of water, right? To a certain level, I would use a marker or a sticker to stick there. So the next day or the next two days when I come back, the water level is still the same, then it's good. It means that no water seep through. So the the, that platform is waterproof. If it went down, then it means there's a leakage. And then what's the problem is it affects the neighbors downstairs. Mm. Then uh, certain things only happen when there's movement in the building. So over time, because of all the vibration in the movement, then that affects certain piping joints or whatsoever. So like whatever piping that goes through your floor trap, for example, it needs to elbow through the ceiling of the unit downstairs, right? So after this elbow, and these are the joints, and in joints, those are the most vulnerable parts. And usually there will be leakage. So it's pretty common when your toilet, right? You look up, always got stain on for old house. It's because of the neighbors above. And who should fix it? The neighbors above. So you need to tell your management, then the management will contact him to send people to come and fix. Yeah, because your responsibility will be the piping below you. And it's pretty common. And that's the frustration of owning a condo. But ultimately, with the spirit of strata title, communication needs to be established between neighbors. Correct to a certain extent, but the problem of a penthouse is the roof is common areas. So if let's say your ceiling is leaking because the roof is malfunctioned, there's a leakage within the roof, I need to get a joint management meeting agreeable to fix the roof then only it solves my problem for the leakage because everyone shares the roof. That's why uh, some old advice I got from investors is never buy the penthouse, never buy the highest floor. So unless there's a facility deck on the rooftop, then you buy the penthouse, it's fine. Meaning that there will be constant movement and attention to the top floor. If it's those old condos where it's just a roof, uh, so nobody cares. You are in a rush because everything is getting wet at home. But for them, it's like, why bother? He's the richest dude in the building, right? <laughs> why I can? Next week, ah, you think I free, ah? Yeah, so that is the not so glamour part of a penthouse. Wow, we learned a lot today, right? So, I still think it's possible because 
很多时候我们人追求的就是一种选择嘛。坦白讲啊，比我想象中的是小的。我在买的时候，大家看收入的时候要有一点智慧啦，就不要觉得说哦，我我买的就是这间家是我的，其实不是。格局上，整个装饰上面，整个装备上面都是不一样的。She just complain about her expectation not match. After visiting the show unit versus real life, aren't we all? <laughs> That's why when you go into a sales gallery, you watch the show unit, right? Okay, there are certain trades in the industry where I don't think it's right. They do not reflect the exact height and the exact dimensions of the building. So sometimes it's they will alter a little bit because of the restriction of the building of the sales gallery. Some is they alter the height, so with the height being lower or higher, and one feet is a great difference. Like a lot of people, ah yeah, ten feet, eleven feet, right? It's ten percent higher. It's like this higher, so that becomes a huge difference in visual impact. Then the other one would be the lack of doors. Why the space feels so big? Because there are no doors. What? Yeah, especially the toilets. When you go in, hey, wow, so nice. Why the? Counter can straight away connect, but when you straight away buy, you need to take into consideration of the turn radius of the door. Then ID treatments makes a lot of difference, a lot of reflective materials, a lot of shiny materials for you to direct like your visual. Like okay, when I go into the unit, straight away, wow, the ceiling or the chandelier or the wall finishes or whatsoever, you forget certain things within the unit itself. Yeah, and sometimes a fit change in the room, you wouldn't know. Let's pull out the boundary of the building two feet more. How many people go and measure? Nobody. Right? Besides me, lah. Besides me. So that all becomes the the mismatch of expectation. Not saying that they are wrong because everything is is. What's the official expectation of both of us is written in the SPA. But people don't have the visual expectation. Yes, because not everyone can really like imagine that it's a three D. Another blur line is what's above the cut line, because for floor plan, what you see in the floor plan is the the cut line is like at 900, 900 mm, which is the human body, not my human body. <laughs> That sounds weird. Okay, so let's say cut 900. So whatever you see below, like the doors and windows, are only shown. Any windows above 900 is not reflected in the floor plan. So when you have like intro unit, hey, I have windows here. But on real life, whether I want to give you or not is my choice. They said yes, show you need you have right, but in the SPA drawing, there's no drawings showing that there's a window there. Yeah, I mean, yes, there's specifications as well, like quality tiles. From a developer standpoint, it makes sense because sometimes models expire, they will be discontinued or whatsoever. So like there's particular series, I cannot get replacement. So it's to safeguard myself. Let's say if I were to give you that 37 LED screen inch, right? But three years, four years down the road, everything is AMOLED already. No, there's no more LED in production. How? Even if I give you an improved version, it's a mismatch. It's still illegal. So that's the same thinking for all materials as well. So they give you similar or equivalent. The same applies to aircon. How many horsepower? Do they promise the brand? Very difficult. They will always put a quality brand or equivalent. So everyone tries to think like, oh, developer try to cheat money, right? But you, if you are a developer, I'm not confident in three years time this production line is still intact. Yeah. So that is the reasoning behind. That also leaves certain flexibility just in case the project does not do well, profit has been compromised. Now we are at a loss. But I die die. I want to fulfill my duty to complete the building. I know I'm supposed to give aircon, but let's run with the cheaper option. At least I complete the project, not run away halfway. Yeah. So if there's a major change, like for example, the shower screen <coughs> was supposed to be this spec, but then I want to change something, alter anything within the schedule. The material specification page. I will need to inform. Even if I were to improve, I will need to inform everybody. Like let's, uh, for example, with this structural change in column arrangement, improves the efficiency of the building. So I get to save like fifteen percent of cost because of this column magically lah. But it compromises the door width. Standard door. Now I need to give a smaller door, or I change the position of the door. Because it's in the SPA, I only need to inform everybody. So there's always an option. Like, okay, I'm not agreeable. 
I don't want a building. I don't want a house. Yes, it's up to you as a buyer. But then you waited for three years already. Now you tell me cannot. <coughs> so usually it's people just like, you know, Malaysians. Yeah, never mind, never mind. Jalan je lah, jalan je lah. We figure out later lah. Yeah. 还有一间房，这间也是最小间的一间房。我一些耳帽 stickers。That's insane. 这间房呢？这间房我就想说，就做我的书房，或者是如果以后有孩子的话，就做孩子的房就好了。那虽然它很小，可是它还是有独立的厕所。对，就是这样。现在我在想，如果这个门封了起来，我想啊，我想了不了啊，可能出来不是这样。这个门封了起来之后，这一片就会是书架墙。That's why it's weird. You see the kitchen, the dry kitchen is on the side, but in order to access the wet kitchen, I need to walk out right there. But the the problem is then, is the wall hackable? Yeah. So it depends on the built quality or the built material of the structural elements of the wall already, lah. So is it like brick wall? Is it concrete? Because I'm now living in a place where there's no wall. I just think, hey, we need to be careful. It's good. Here is a reserved forest. I think it's not bad. I think it's good. The old people will say that there's a tree. It's just a tree. When I first came, I was very excited. 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 你第一次来的那个感受好不好？其实真的是要到你拿房子那一刻，你才会有真的是很确定的感觉。因为你平时看 showroom， 那个 showroom 可能是不一样的地方，你知道吗？就是你买的是 location A， 它 showroom 在 location B 也有可能的。所以你自己要很有智慧去判断那个感觉。So she is talking about how to bridge the expectation when you buy a new project versus when you get the actual house. And most of them are tricked somehow because <coughs> you are just bombarded with all these amazing pictures and imaginations. When you walk into the sales gallery, your future life is gonna be yeah. So it's to trigger your emotional side, side the the music and all. So with her case is she says that it needs to be a visitor. To me, I think you can bridge that by visiting the site. Like I think yesterday we went for a review. And we went to the site. Is whoa, and I think that's the main difference. Like a lot, like for this project, there are certain neighboring elements that a lot of people complain. Like, how did you not know that the elements are there? Like, there's a forest reserve right in front, very good, but there are certain negative ones, which is the low cost housing or whatsoever next to this project. Didn't you know? And surprisingly, after they pay a million for the house, they have no idea that the low cost is there. So then, whose fault is it? So in the channel, that's why I always say that it's very important to make informed decisions. What's there? What's there? And part of the reviews that we do also now, even if it's an empty land, we try to get the plan from the DBKL, the development plan on what's the designated usage of that land. At least to curb the expectation, I know it's not another high rise. Then I think it's fine. Anything else is fine. The one STP, then <laughs> okay lah. STP is sewage treatment plant. Imagine such a high end one right opposite you. There'll be the aeration pond. Goodness, <laughs> right? <sighs> yeah, but again, that's the wisdom of buying a new project versus a sub sale lah. Because you will not know, especially the views that you get. Like this project, if you buy ten floors higher, it may cost maybe twenty thousand more. But the views of the green that you get, ooh, because like at this level, I think it's a bit too close to the road. 对设计的风格其实已经有给粉丝看过一些，主要是走比较干净、时尚一点，然后带一点点的 English 的风就好了。其实我对设计风格没有太多的要求。So what she said is, uh, she has uh, communicated the teams of design that she wants with the designer, and that's the main difference with whatever we do in the makeover, guys. If that's an interior designer, she or they are paid to listen to your requirements of the space. I want a bit of this. I want Japanese. I want industrial. I want a combo. I want English. I want colonial. I want a combo. I want Peranakan. I want whatever. Right? Whatever you want, they will make it happen. But for the makeover guys, it's in budget. So what's different will be the time and the process of doing all those customization. Yeah, and a lot of people don't see that. Like they come to us like now, especially if it's an own stay on, it's very direct. If you got money, just go for ID for the full experience. I would want to go through one day lah. That's the goal lah that I'm going to. But if it's an investment one, 
I don't have to think so much why bother because time matters like for the previous episode that we reacted six months was spent just to come up with the design then who's going to pay that six months of installment like this one let's say it's a million money installment is at three thousand two three thousand three it's at twenty one thousand gone i could have used it for a very very good fridge the smart one yeah 我最期待的角落是我的厨房耶，因为我现在的厨房，我觉得应该要讲一集。大家如果想看的话，在下面留言。我想讲一集我现在住的房子遇到的问题，就是因为那时候的ID在Project一半跑掉，大家在一个人
，所以它就是要有一个比较好的地板可以住久一点。那地板这些你就要抓的细一点。可是如果油漆一般一丝丝烂啊，那就不用了。如果你要重新油漆的话，所以还是要有点经验啊，最好有一个有经验的 ID 跟你分享会好一点。对啊。We talked about defect and. Her principles is if I want to change it, I will not care about the defect. But if I'm going to use it like floor materials, then she will be a bit more sensitive and peculiar towards the the material itself, lah. So because it's forever. But I have my own principles. I think the first one is utilities. So those must have elements such as water, electricity. Right, all those must-have animals must perform their duties in the building, lah. So that is no discount. Second one would be aesthetic concern. So aesthetics, then her principle makes sense. If I'm gonna change it, if I'm gonna wallpaper the wall, right? Why do I care about? Yes, how does the the paint come out a little bit, or there's not enough layers of paint? But like for doors, I don't care as much on the aesthetic. But the bottom part of the door, like the door, right? The bottom part of the door is always the easiest area for damage, water damage especially. And if you look into a lot of new doors, bottom part are not painted. Ah, so you can just use a phone, right? You can just look down and see whether is it painted or not. Especially for toilet doors, like they want to give you the atas feel, they give you timber doors, right? Very good. But the area that always canal water is the bottom part. So I don't care whether top is painted or not. I don't care. I know they should be, but I can just close one eye. But the bottom, that's for practicality purposes. It cannot serve its function. Then what's the point? Again, wisdom. <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, 一起买啦，算是。So the question was, who bought the property? Did she buy or did the husband buy? So. Oh, I think they are planning to get married, lah. So it's like ang, uh, fiance. 一起买的。Partner. 借钱是一个很深的智慧啊，就跟银行借钱是需要有一些分配的。So she's talking about working together just to get a loan. It means that to qualify for that loan, certain financial strengths are required. Like you need to have past records. You need, especially if, like, for brand new entrepreneurs who is not under employment, your entire company. Accounts and inflow and outflow, everything needs to be transparent, and the bankers will see that how are you making your money? Is your tax on intact or whatsoever? So, like you said, it's an art. So for those who are still under employment, and if you choose to be employed, it's an advantage also because security is on your side. That's why banks love employees. Six months, okay, got the confirmation letter, okay. But for business people, risky. Two to three years. Two to three years. So it depends on your strength. Sometimes not enough. Then like, okay, you know what? And that if you will choose to venture out as an entrepreneur for those who are under employment, buy a house first if you can. Like if you die die, you know you can afford. You buy a house first because even if you can afford later, but you don't have the required salary slips or documentation, you cannot get the loan. So be smart about it, lah. And it's weird, like how banks evaluate credits is weird, but. I didn't set it, so they set the rules. So we play in accordance to that lah. Hmm. 要分配到谁接就谁接哦。就像我有一些影片跟大家讲的，我是觉得就算是结婚之后都应该要有这样的协议。如果两个人的关系从在一起到分开，无论是谈恋爱在一起或分手，或结了婚或离婚，这种这样的物业要怎么样分配，我跟我另一半都已经有协议。哇哦。There's an agreement. There's a written agreement between her and her partner, irregardless to who pays the house, whether is it together or divorced or separated or whatsoever. That's so mature. We spoke about like why I discourage lovers to buy a house together, get a pet better, right? Don't get a pet also. Get a Digimon. Then get a Digimon because you pity the cat or the pets, right? So yeah, and. We know even get married, we have friends who just split together, right? Now ex-husband and ex-wife but still stay together in the same house. That's weird, right? I don't know how. Yeah, anything can happen. No one foreseen, but it's just weird. And this is so mature. And what would jeopardize the relationship more is when it's done on purpose. I know I should pay, but I just don't want because I want to see you miserable. Who? 
what a mature thing to do. But would you be sensitive like if your other partner asks you to sign an agreement before we get married? If anything happens, you still need to pay your share. I think it's from a logical But then like, so are you foreseeing that we will get separated? Yeah, different people will have different So I think it's the maturity that dictates the conversation. Yeah. If you're not at that maturity, right, why get married? Wow, this, hey, this is a property channel. <laughs> this is not a live channel. Wow. <笑>你是我这间房子的价格是你自己去任何的property网站大概就知道了 <笑> Okay, so the price I think is definitely more than a million. Definitely more than a million. The, the common areas are amazing for this property. It's such a high remark for their common areas. But anyway, uh, the takeaway from this, uh, so I hope that she gets all her sponsors, definitely, by doing so. I can't wait for the furnished product actually. Overall, it's a very nice sharing of properties you get during VB. I think this is a fabulous product already. Like the conditions, like you don't see stickers everywhere. We have seen online those stickers, the whole freaking house of stickers. So it's a debate whether you want to get a professional defect checker or you want to get an ID to do it. I would just get an ID to do it because it's practicality that dictates whether to uh, pursue further on an element or not. But for defect checkers, it's their role to point out every single thing. If I tell you the house, oh, the house is very good. Then I pay you that money, right? It seems that you're not working. Why I pay you so much and you tell me no problem? Then I hire you for what? So it's in their natural instinct to just stick every damn thing, lah, right? Then you have the whole house full with stickers. Then you piss off the customer service people. This person like Charlie Pasal only. Because it's in contrast, right? Their responsibility and duties. So it's a balance. Like if you have the money to wait out for the work to be done, then by all means, right? If you are in a rush like us property investors, I want the house as fast as possible, right? Because I don't want to pay any more maintenance. I want a house rented out as soon as possible. Then it's a different strategy altogether. But brand new house is always happy to see brand new house. And there's a lot of wisdom in what she said. I think one statement that we talk so long, one wisdom, one statement that we talk so long. Can't wait though. I really can't wait for the for the furnish episode. And I guess that's all for this reaction. If you guys have more suggestions, I think there are suggestions for more Singapore ones. We have seen like the Reno Kings and some more. So like, I think let's check that out because ultimately I want to learn more. And like if we go through, so the whole objective is to go through other people's experience and to point out things that we usually don't see. The blind spots are like, usually. I guess that's all for today. Thank you very much. And hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Ciao.